Variables are a really cool feature in Notion that can help you write clean formulas that are easy to maintain and troubleshoot if anything goes wrong. But the thing is, a lot of Notion users aren't taking full advantage of them because they don't know how they work. So in today's video, I want to explain variables, break down the benefits of using them, and show you how they can help you write cleaner code faster. Hey guys, my name is Ava and I'm a Notion consultant and Notion formulas expert. My goal today is to prove that variables are not your enemy, but in fact one of the best tools for writing formulas in Notion. So first things first, what exactly are variables? Well, imagine variables as containers that store information you want to use again and again in your formula. Variables in Notion are similar to variables in math equations. So let's take a simple math expression as an example. x equals 2 plus 2. Now, instead of having to write 2 plus 2 every time you need to use this value, we can just create a variable called x to represent the value of 2 plus 2. This way, we can just use letter x whenever we need to reference that value. But variables in Notion and coding in general aren't just limited to numbers. They can hold any type of information like text, dates, checkboxes, or even other formulas. And just like in math, variables in Notion both have a name and a value. Using variables can bring a lot of benefits. First, it saves you time and effort by eliminating the need to rewrite the same code over and over again in your formula. Second, as your formula becomes more complex, breaking it down into smaller building blocks using variables can make it easier to read, organize, and maintain in the long run. And third, variables make troubleshooting a lot easier because you can isolate and test each variable individually and you can find the one causing you problems and fix it really fast. Now let me break down how to actually use variables in Notion formulas. In Notion, there are two functions for variables, let and let's. Both of these functions have a very simple syntax. If we recall our math equation example, x equals two plus two. x, so the name of the variable is the first argument and two plus two, which is the value, is the second argument. Third argument is the expression. The expression is where you can use your variable with other data or on its own to display the final result of your formula. Now the key difference between the two functions is that the let function allows you to define a single variable. On the other hand, the let's function allows you to define variables in bulk. Okay, now that we've covered the basics, let's dive deeper into some best practices when working with variables and formulas in general. I'll use a practical example to demonstrate these tips and tricks to make it a bit clearer and easier to learn. Today we'll be building a project dashboard that shows the total number of project tasks and the number of tasks per status. I already have two simple databases ready for the purpose of this tutorial, one for projects and one for tasks, which is related to the projects dashboard. In the projects database, we have the YouTube video project, which has five project tasks and the CRM template project, which has no tasks. I also have a formula property ready, so let's go ahead and build our project dashboard. Okay, so tip number one, outline your process with comments. Comments are a really cool addition to the formulas functionality and came out with the formulas 2.0 update. Comments let you break down your formula into smaller parts and explain what each of these parts does. And this is really helpful when it comes to working with complex formulas because meaningful comments make it easier to understand what each part of your code does. To add a comment in Notion formula, just write slash asterisk, add your comment and close it with asterisk. Slash. Now for our project dashboard, we'll outline three steps. First, extract the total number of tasks per status. Second, define the styling of the result. Third, define the format of the result. And what should happen if there are no project tasks? Now, outlining these steps before you start writing the code can make the process of writing your formula a lot more straightforward. Plus, you can just copy paste these comments in the respective location in your formula when you tackle individual steps in your code. Just make sure not to overwhelm your formula with comments because that actually defeats the purpose of making your code clean, readable, and easy to maintain. Okay, on to tip number two, use variables for everything. Now, what I mean by that is break down each part of your formula into smaller chunks. Doing that will allow you to write the final expression using just a combo of variables, spacing, and a bit of short text instead of having to write a long piece of code to get the final result. But this method makes your code cleaner and reduces the risk of errors because you can check each variable as you go and catch any unexpected results early on. I will demonstrate these benefits a bit later on when we'll be testing our formula for errors. For now, let's just start with defining our variables. We'll use the let's function because we're defining multiple variables at once. First, we'll create a variable called total tasks. Now this variable represents the total number of tasks per project. And to get that number, we'll use the tasks property and the length function. So the length function is used to extract the length of a string or the length of a list. 
When working with lists, the length function basically counts how many items there are in a list. So in our example of the tasks relation property, the length function is going to count the number of the related project tasks. Okay, next we'll extract the number of tasks per status. Since we have three different statuses, we'll define three new variables. One for tasks in a to-do status, one for tasks that are in progress, and one for tasks that are done. And that brings me to tip number three. Use clear and meaningful variable names and a consistent naming convention. Now that might seem unimportant, but it's actually a really simple practice that can make a huge difference in how easily you understand and navigate your code. So what is a meaningful name for a variable? Well, imagine coming back to your code a year from now to make some changes. A meaningful name will allow you to recognize exactly what each individual variable is supposed to do based on the name of the variable. And about the naming convention, here's the method that I use. I start with a lowercase letter and uppercase the first letter of each new word if the variable name consists of multiple words, just like I did in the total tasks variable. So for example, if I'm extracting to do tasks, I'll name my variable to do tasks with the lowercase first t, uppercase d, and uppercase second t. Just like that. So to extract tasks in the to do status, we'll use the tasks relation property again, just like we did with the total tasks variable. Then we'll use the filter function and set the condition of the filter to stati status equals to do. And lastly, we'll use length function to count the number of to-do tasks. Moving on, we'll follow the exact same process for tasks in progress. Now, when it comes to the done variable, I'll intentionally leave out the length function so I can then show you how to troubleshoot your formula using variables a little bit later. Okay, next we'll talk about variables for styling. Let's first add some spacing here to make it more readable and copy paste the comment so that we know exactly what this part of the code does. Remember when I said use variables for everything? Well, that includes styling. By putting styling in a variable, you can easily update it later on without having to correct it in every single spot where you apply that style. And that's a huge time saver, and I'll demonstrate that after we finish our entire formula. Now let's name this variable style text. I could have also named the variable style, but I don't recommend doing that because there's also a function called style, and that can become really confusing. So just as an extra tip, don't name your variables with the same name as the name of one of the functions. Okay, now let's define that value. Say B for bold, C for code, and gray for gray text. Now make sure to enclose the entire string into square brackets. Otherwise, the variable will not work when you use it with the style function. Okay, now that we've covered all the variables, it's time to write the final expression. But before we do that, Let's not forget tip number four, which is test all your variables before you write the final expression. Now, this is the part where I can actually show you how using variables and testing them can help you catch any mistake easily and make your troubleshooting process a lot quicker. To test your variables, just write the variable name, check the result, and make sure that the formula is returning the value you expect. So let's go through an example. First, I'll test the total tasks variable, which I expect will return the number five, because there are five project tasks related to the YouTube video project. Okay, just add a comma here and the value is five, which is as expected. Second, I'll test the to-do tasks variable. And it's returning number two, and that's okay because we have two tasks in the to-do status. Next, we have in progress, which should return number one because we have one in progress task. And lastly, we have the done variable. Now for the done tasks variable, if you remember, I intentionally left out the length function. If I hadn't known about this mistake, I would have expected the formula to return the number two because there are actually two project tasks since that is done. But if you take a look at the formula editor, you'll actually see 
that it's returning a list of tasks instead is done. So breaking the formula down using variables and isolating each one of them to test allowed us to pinpoint exactly where the problem is, which is the done tasks variable. If I correct this mistake now and add the length function, the formula will now return the correct result. Okay, now let's test the style text variable. This one should return the string b, comma, c, comma, gray. And it does. Good. Now that we've tested all of our variables, we can confidently move on to writing the actual final expression. So let's just delete that. And I will copy paste the final comment. And this brings us to tip number five. Specify what should happen if there's no available data. Now, if we take our tasks and project databases as examples, you'll notice that the CRM template project has no project tasks. Now, truth be told, in our example, nothing drastic would happen if we didn't specify what should happen in that case. But I have seen a lot of dashboards that felt and looked incomplete, and that's not ideal if you want to have a clean looking dashboard. That is why I always recommend keeping that in mind, and if needed, specifying what the result should be if there's no data available. So to address this, we we'll use the if function. The if function has three arguments. First one is the condition to evaluate. The second one is what happens if this condition is true? And the third one is what should happen if this condition is false? In our case, we'll use the if function to check if our total tasks variable representing all of the project tasks is zero. Now, if this condition is true, meaning that there are no tasks, we'll display a message saying no tasks recorded. And then we'll add some style to it using the style function in our style text variable and go ahead to define what should happen if this condition is false. So if the condition is false, meaning that our project does have tasks, we want to show the total number of tasks and the breakdown by status. So let's start by writing total tasks. Add some spacing here, followed by the total tasks variable. And to separate this section visually from the rest of the data, we'll use two backslash n characters. The backslash n character is a special character that you can use to end the current line and start a new one. So the first backslash n character creates a new row, and the second one adds a second empty row. Okay. Next, we want to display the to-do tasks. So let's write to-do followed by the to-do tasks variable. And since we don't want an empty row here, we'll just use one backslash n character. And let's do the same for the in progress and done tasks. So in progress, followed by the in progress variable, plus backslash n. And then lastly, done plus done tasks. And here we don't need to add a backslash n because we don't want an empty row after it. And now let's style the result using our style text variable. To do that, we'll first add an opening bracket at the beginning of the if false argument. Then we'll add a closing one at the end of the if false argument. Then we'll just add the style function and a style text variable. And you see that the style is applied to our text. Good. So this formula is done. And for the final touch, what we'll do is change this database view to the gallery view. We'll change the car preview to none. And for me, I already had this property displayed. If you don't have it, just go under properties and show the project dashboard formula. Now, when we check the results, you'll see that the YouTube video project shows the total number of tasks and the number of tasks per status. But the CRM template project shows no tasks recorded. So this means that everything is working as expected. Now, to demonstrate the benefit of using variables to define our styling, let me show you how easy it is to change these gray labels to blue ones. Just open the formula property and go to the style text variable 
And let's change this to blue, add a blue background. Click done. You'll see all of the styles have been updated automatically. All right, that's it. We've reached the end of this video. I hope my explanation was clear, that you had fun following along and that variables feel a lot less intimidating now. So my final advice is practice, practice, practice. Use variables in your formula, especially if you're an ocean creator or a consultant, because it's really important to write clean code for your clients so they can maintain them more easily and learn from them. Don't forget to tune in for the next part of this series where we'll explore more advanced Notion formula use cases and concepts like nested variables. And if you want more Notion formulas to put out content and creative Notion tips, connect with me on Twitter and subscribe to my newsletter. I've included both links in the description below. Thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video.